alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to welcome you guys today to our Minnesota Somali Republican dinner. How exciting is this? I am so happy to see so many friendly faces. And I am so happy that we're all here together to make a big difference in history. I'm excited that friendship are being built today for our future. And I'm super excited that we're sitting here together and holding hands of what's coming. Please stand up for our Pledge of Alliance and standing for tonight. Joining me on stage is RNC National Committee woman, my friend, Barb Sutter, to lead us to the Pledge of Alliance. It is my honor and my pleasure to be here, as Dr. Jensen always says, at a time such as this. If you would all please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much to my friend, Barb. I would like to invite our Imam, John Emery. Please welcome Emery as joining me on stage to lead us. I would like you to tell you a little bit about him. John Emery served over nine years as an integrator and translator. His service took him across the United States, North Africa, the Persian Gulf, and other locals. After his honorable discharge in 2003, John graduated from the University of Minnesota with a degree in global studies. Since becoming Muslim in 2004, John has pursued opportunities to foster peace, local justice, in our communities. John is a Muslim volunteer at local jails, prisons, where regularly leads Friday prayers in, in, as an imam. A native Muslim Minnesotan, John is, enjoys exploring the Minnesota outdoors year around. And he, I'm super, super excited to have him here. Give him a veranda applause, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you all, and the mercy and blessings of God be with you all as well. Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of God, most merciful, most loving. So thank you, first of all, for the great honor uh, of allowing me to share a few opening prayers and supplications at this event. So we'd like to begin with a brief explanation uh, for our interfaith friends. Whenever Muslims begin any new action, from the trivial to the profound, we always begin by invoking the names of the God of creation, the most sublimely loving and merciful, and by asking for his grace and assistance in this endeavor. So this evening, we'll begin by reciting the opening chapter of the Quran called Al-Fatiha in Arabic, which is commonly translated as the opener. It is seven short verses, which I'll recite in Arabic and then translate. After Al-Fatiha, we will share some short supplications or prayers, first in Arabic, which I will translate into English. And after each supplication, it's customary for Muslims to say Amin or Amen. For our interfaith friends, uh, you are welcome to join us in the Amens. As Muslims believe we are all united by the reality of the God who created us all, and uh, the same God to whom we shall all return. So, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rasheem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All praise is due to God, Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The most compassionate, the most merciful. 
Malik Yomadin, Lord of the Day of Judgment. Iyak and Nabadu wa Iyak and Nasta'in. You alone do we worship, and it is you alone we beseech for aid. Ihdina as Sarat al Mustaqim. Guide us on the straight path. Sarat al Ladina and Amta alayhim. Rail Mahlubi alayhim wala dalin. The path of those whom you have blessed, not those uh, with whom you are displeased, nor those who have gone astray. Rabbuna la tazikh qalubna ba'd the hadaytina. O Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. My Lord, make me and those believers of my descendants keep up prayer. O Lord, accept my prayers. O oh Lord, forgive me, my parents, and the believers on the day when the judgment will come to pass. Rabbuna atna fi dunya hasnatan wa fi akhirati hasnatan wa qinna adhab nar. O Lord, give us in this world the, the things which are good, and give us good in the hereafter, and protect us uh, from the punishment of fire. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhib al afu fa afu anni. O oh Lord, you are the most forgiving, and you love forgiveness, so forgive me. Rabbuna taqabbal minna innaka anta asamiya al-alim. Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, you are the most, uh, the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Amin. Thank you so much, Imam, for blessing us for tonight. Again, I want to thank you all for coming tonight. We have all come together to build a friendship around shared goals and values. We have an important election that's coming up in 44 days, guys. A powerful election where we have the opportunity to elect some of the most greatest people I have met in the community who's going to lead us and who's going to bring us back where we need to be together we as a Somali community need to stand by our election and support them so we can bring back our values that have been stripped away from us this is our opportunity to make change this is the opportunity to stand for what you believe. And it starts here tonight. It is an honor to introduce you some of our top leaders from both communities. My friend, Imam Tuwakal, who has led us to this moment with his friend right by his side, our chairman of the GOP, Han. This is a big thing for us, and I'm so excited to have them both here together. Thank you. Thank you and, and welcome, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to be with us tonight and not only the hundreds who are here in this room, but I understand that we're live streaming and there may be 20 or 30,000 others who are watching this live stream. So thank you all for joining us in this historic event. <laughs> Months ago, uh, at the beginning of the year, actually I was invited to meet with Imam Tawakal and other Somali leaders in, uh, in Minneapolis. And we talked about the Republican Party and what the Republican Party stands for and what we hope to accomplish in the coming election. And we talked about some of the challenges that we face in our communities. But we also recognize that as Republicans, we have the same values as the Somali people. 
And we realized as well that it's uh, sometimes not easy for Republicans and Somalis to meet and to form a relationship. And that's partly because in many of the areas of the community where Somalis live, there aren't any elected Republicans. They're mostly Democrats. So it's been a challenge for the Somali people and the Republican Party members to get together and to meet. And we wanted to find out, we asked ourselves, what can we do to improve this? What can we do? to try to build a relationship between Republicans and Somali people. In the course of those efforts, uh, we've done several things. One thing we did is we opened up a victory center in CD5 uh, in South Minneapolis, yes, in partnership with the Somali community on Park Avenue. If you have a chance, please visit us there. And we also participated in a number of other events in the past few months. So. We are here this evening to continue that effort to make friends, to build relationships, and to say very clearly that Republicans and the Somali people share the same values. We, we are concerned about the same things. We are concerned about crime. We want to live in neighborhoods where we're free to work and, and live our lives uh, safely. Uh, we want to have excellent schools for our children and we want to have economic opportunities that allow us to earn a living and to grow our businesses. So this evening we will hear from Somali and Republican leaders and from our Republican candidates as they express what they desire, our common desire, to build a better community for all of us and to work in partnership together to make our community and our state a better place. So, here in these final weeks of this campaign, we look forward to working together to elect all our candidates, and we look forward to celebrating with you together a victory in November. So thank you for being here. And I want to just make a statement that I want to thank my friend, Imam Tawako, for his graciousness, for his leadership, for his kindness, and for his ability to really make this event and other events happen. So thank you. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. I wanted to speak Somali language. ولكنك <تصفيق> يا حوجود يا جود جود يا دقارود وكم بحني وحل الجوجا وقتي إنه الله حساب تم لهين واحد دنتين يكون جرته وحأنو دون إنه فاليو جن وحوي هاي وحأنو أباه إنه هاي ديكشن كي وحبر شدي سكورت كي أمنيج ودكتين ما أنت صوت من يا بوليس ما أرتالو فرنا يا أمنيج وارلو ماي وحأنو أباه إنه هاي إنه إنه كنا ولا إنه المه إنه كنا ولا دان نول أدو قيمة بدن سادرادد هشيسكا اين ودا غلني جيرمان ديفيد هان يو دد بدن او كندي ادو في انا سيد دكتور سكوت جانسون او كمدي اي سي سي و خلو بدن يو كيم كروك دي كمي تاي دد بدن او حزب قيمه اولى او مانتو ام موقتو ان لا ودا هادلي كرو ان هشيس لا ودا غلي كرو وخي لا اسكو مان دافسنا انا لو هشين كرو وخي نو قادناي ان انو كهشينو وحين قاد النّي النّجوم مديسن عد كنا ماش ودن ويا مصلحة يكون جرتين عن عد كنا سينو وحين قاد النّي إن حزب الرّبّلي كان كتاجرنا وحين أجنا هاي وحيابها أين الديدن هاي لقن كي أخلاق ذا كمنتجا نقول دعي وحد أكتين حزب الديمقراطية وحد أكتين داو عن جس وجاري وحقب شلاعان مقع شقة تكلية وحكسون نقضي سنجرين وحقب هنهاي عد وحقبنا يسا 
وحن وباه أن هاي وحبر شرده دي سوس كوت جونسون ووضع وآه والد كأن الله سيلا عقتي إلميه ووياه شو والد كحق وياه شو ماشو إلميه زجي سنة وحربنا مرك حفيز بن فرني قف والبؤ مبادي ذا آمنسن قف والبؤ آمنسن من نمو إسرائيل قام يسقبسي إن عد كأنه كل رأس سنة حفيز كيس كدي وانجليه وحين سي والدنا عد جد جو هذا الدنيا هاي أنت فكر كاولتنا إسكت نحضرنا يان ما بادي دينا نحن صابن دينه وحن إسكت ربنا إن إنه جعان كليا نقنا وحن ربنا إن إنه إسكت ضد نقنا وحن ربنا حقوق دينا إن إنه رأسنا حزب جنا ما أنت ديار بوي هاي جيرمان ديفيد هان رنتي وحياة بضن إيه شروط بضن إيه هشيز بضن أو إنه وضع جلنا إنه سو جد بنا إنه وأدرك الدون تانا حفيز كادو قو إيمان إنسان أيها جرا وحن إذا كعد صنا يا إنه إنه عاو تاريخ ذي إنها الكائك بالله بتو وحمد مدو أها إنه كسرنا هاد بنا وما سنتين thank you Mr Scott Johnson thank you CC thank you Mr Scott هاد بنا دين سلام يا عاو حيك بالله وذنا وإنه فرنت هاي مدني مدى إنه وعي بالله بتو وذا جرك إنه هو بالله وذي value جنو كم إذا يسنا هاي وعن كوك لا أركتي دوين هاي نوا كيشين هنا thank you so much Hi I'm Norm Coleman former United States Senator from Minnesota it's great to be here with you and unfortunately virtually but to be here with you, the Somali community, uh, the Republican Party, in a very important gathering. I got elected to the United States Senate uh, 20 years ago. Uh, one of the first things I did is, is I hired a young representative of the community, uh, Mohammed Wadire. Uh, he's 20 years old. He's probably not so young anymore, but ne none of us are, actually. Uh, but I, I, I knew that the Somali community was going to be an important part of the future of Minnesota. I wanted to make sure that I was doing all that I could to help ensure that that brighter future. One of the first things we did, we reached out to Jendai Fraser in the State Department to try to get the U.S. to have a presence in Somalia. They didn't have one. The Brits were there. The Italians were there. The U.N. was there. Uh, but the U.S. wasn't. And so we, we, we made that happen. Because it was important for folks in my community, whether they had a relative, a relative in, in Mogadishu, a relative in, in Nairobi, or, or in, it had an issue uh, in Minneapolis, or, or Faribault, or Wyndham, or wherever the Somali community was, I wanted to make sure that, that we were there to help. Uh, government plays an important part in shaping that future. I had that bright vision for bright future, but government's going to play a part. Hubert Humphrey, former senator from Minnesota, former vice president, once said, uh, government's either going to do something to you or for you, but they're going to do something. And in fact, they will do something. And the question is, are they do something to going to give you and the community an opportunity to be the best that you can be to, to, to achieve, you know, the American dream, which I'll talk about a little later? Uh, or are they going to be a burden? Are they going to put in place barriers for small business? Are they going to put in place high taxes? Are they going to make it difficult for parents to send their kids to schools of their choice to charter schools? Uh, are they going to have burdensome regulation that's going to kill small business? That, that if, if you do that, then, then you're not serving the needs of the community. Uh, I have always believed, by the way, that my Democrat friends and I shared a vision, a common vision, of wanting to make sure that every child could be the best they could be. What we differ in is on the approach of how to make that happen, how to get there. Uh, it's, you know, in many ways, I tell you, it's, it's the difference perhaps between teaching someone to fish and feeding fish. My Democrat friends would say that the answer was a government program. Let's feed people fish. But but our approach and, and the approach of the Republican Party, my approach was always teach people to fish so that you're going to feed them not just for that meal, not just through that program, but you're going to feed them you know, for, for, for ages to come. And so that's the difference. And, and I got to say, I grew up in a Democrat household. I, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I don't think I ever met a, a Republican until I went to college. Uh, but But as I got older, uh, and certainly when I was elected mayor of St. Paul, I, I saw that the things that would provide the opportunity for a brighter future wasn't about more government. Uh, the things that I tried to do as mayor is, is I didn't raise taxes in eight years. The only folks that, that fought that were the Democrat Party who wanted more money for, for more programs. I put more police officers on the street. But but the, the Democrats were, were, you know, didn't want to add uh, folks in that area. They They wanted to kind of do more social workers. I started 20 charter schools, but my Democrat friends kind of opposed that. 
And, and so as, as we kind of fast forward, I saw that that the things that needed to be done uh, were, were not being done. And the reality, my friends, is that hasn't changed today. That unfortunately, my friends on the other side of the aisle, the ones that kind of led the movement for defund the police, have led the movement for continually higher taxes, have pushed for continuous more regulation, have closed down the schools during COVID and still try to prevent parents from sending kids to the schools of their choice through charter schools. And the Republican Party has a has a different vision. I'm thrilled that we're having this conversation today. Uh, I, I, I believe the Somali community embraces the American dream. Uh, we share values between the Republican Party and the Somali community, the, the importance of family. I, I remember the, the importance of the role of women, by the way, in, in, in society. I remember the strength of the Somali women. They, they were not quiet. Uh, they were pretty bold and pretty strong about doing the things that needed to be done for their families. Well, the things that need to be done for your families are things that the Republican Party is, is, is espousing. They're the things that, you know, less regulation, burdens regulation so you can grow small business, lower taxes so that you can decide how to spend your money, that you can have more money in your pocket for the things that you want. Uh, strong support for law enforcement to make sure that our streets are safe for everyone. Giving parents the opportunity to ensure that their kids can go to the school of their choice, supporting things like charter schools. And so that is the difference. Uh, and the difference ultimately then is in your hands because you will choose our next leaders. And, and, and my urging today is for, is for folks within this community, this magnificent Somali community, to come work with Republicans, work with our gubernatorial candidate, Scott Jensen, Lieutenant Governor candidate, Matt Burke, all our congressional candidates, the state legislative candidates, the, the, the candidates for Attorney General Jim Schultz and for Secretary of State and for Treasurer for all our candidates, because in the end, it, it is your future. And government's going to have an impact on that future. And the path forward is not a path of higher taxes, more regulation, uh, oppressive things that, 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 that kind of destroy the American dream versus a path that will kind of nurture the American dream. I believe this, and I know the Somali community embraces the American dream, that you want to make sure that your kids have the opportunity to be the best they can be. And the program that the Republican Party putting forth is, is a program that can ensure that that bright future, that that American dream continues to prosper, that it's not torn apart by some of the the, the, the woke, uh, you know, politically correct perspectives that in the end hold back citizens from being the best they can be. And so join with us, join with me. I apologize profusely that I can't be there with you today. I, I still keep the same schedule I had when I was in the Senate. Uh, I'm usually in Washington Monday to, to Thursday, but business requires me to be here today rather than to be with you in person. But but know that that uh, I will work with you, continue to work with you, work with the Republican Party to make sure that you have a bright future. And so I say thank you. May God, may, may Allah, may Hashem bless you, continue to bless you, and continue to bless the state of Minnesota and the United States of America. Thank you very much. I hope you guys are all still enjoying your dinner. I am so excited to introduce our first candidate of tonight. Tonight, I want to introduce you to my friend, my girl, Cicely Davis. Some of you know her as Cece. <laughs> or the candidate to the signature with the red high heels. She's all dressed in red today. <laughs> Cicely is the CD5 congressional candidate to the US House of Representatives. You know what that means. You know who she's going against. And you know why we need to vote. I don't have to name it. I don't have to say it. She's going to win this candidate with our help because she needs a vote so we can bring back our values that have been taken away from us. This is your turn. Come on, girl, and tell them. Wow. Look at all of us. In case you don't know, you are sitting in political history. Go, Minnesota! 
Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for your friendship, those kind words. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for the warm handshakes and hugs and the embrace. I am absolutely ecstatic and honored to be amongst you all today. I am honored and thrilled to be the first speaker of the evening in this inaugural event, bringing members of the Somali community of Minnesota and the Minnesota Republican Party together to share in this common values, our beliefs, our goals, and our dreams. I'm excited to show that our differences are small, but our passions for families and our futures are equal. My name is Cicely Davis. I am the Republican endorsed candidate from Minneapolis's, Minnesota's 5th Congressional District. My opponent, Ilhan Omar, and I am going to, on November 8th, make history along with your support. <laughs> That's exciting to say. I'm fully intend to be your new representative in the United States Congress. There's a small Somali proverb that reads, a sweet hand is better than a sweet mouth. In other words, a generous person is better received than a person who makes a lot of promises. The Somali, like so many of our other ancestors, came to America for the promise of a better life. The promise of safe communities in which to live and raise children, to have more opportunities for economic stability, education, and work. You have been promised many things by our opponents, and those promises have been felt short. It is time now to realize those promises and join and stand shoulder to shoulder to bring about change and come together in those shared values. We deserve grocery stores and gasoline that's affordable. We deserve neighborhoods and playgrounds and schools that are safe. We deserve to drive our vehicles at night without being carjacked or suffering from other violent crimes. Yeah. Yeah. We deserve our places of business and worship to be free of harassment. We deserve to be and have happy, healthy families with access to the best medical system in the country. We deserve the right to open businesses without being taxed or regulated right out of business. We deserve not to live in riot zones. And we deserve to live with laws that are equally and fair to all citizens. We deserve to attend high school football games without being shot at. And we deserve representatives in Congress who will reach out to all and every member of the community, whatever their faith, with compassion and understanding. We do not deserve divisive language. We do not deserve divisive rhetoric. We do not need language that divides us, but we can use our small list of differences to actually unite us instead. I will reach out into this entire district so we can help unify and heal all of our communities. So tonight, my fellow Republicans and my new Somali friends, I stand with you and I support you, and I ask for your support. And I build this relationship, and I look for it beyond this candidacy so that we can build and grow together for solid, reliable futures and prosperous communities where our children can grow and learn and be able to compete in this complex world. As your representative, I give you my word that there will be action and there will be assistance. 
We believe that the family is sacred. We believe that importance of religious freedom and the God-given right to practice that faith at your leisure. We believe that our children are both the future and our legacy. We believe in entrepreneurship. We believe in free markets and small government. And most importantly, we believe that no achievement should take the place of freedom, take the place of individuality, and we should protect it and multiply it every single day. It is our hope that all of us leave here tonight knowing that there is hope and that we're on the cusp of change and that relationships and us together is desired and wanted and welcomed. I am ecstatic to be here. It will be my absolute honor to represent you. Thank you so very much for your warm embrace. Let's do this for Congressional District 5. Let's do this for Minnesota. And let's continue to lead the charge all across America. Thank you so very much. Let's make history. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. What a powerful woman. Thank you, Cece. Ladies and gentlemen, please and please go vote in November. Be part of a change. We only have days left. And if we lose this chance, we're gonna lose our values again. And if we lose this point, we're gonna lose our children. And if we lose this again, we might not even show up another dinner because we might get shot somewhere. So please, if you're saying I'm part of change, this is your opportunity. And it starts with Cece, and it goes all the way to Scott Jensen, and it goes to my girl, Kim. It's going all the way. And now I'm gonna introduce you guys to one of our Somali leader who's gonna pay, who paved the way for us for tonight, Faisal. Faisal is one of the biggest community leaders who has been with the Republican parties for many, many years, who really stand for the voice for our community. And today he has a team that stands by him. He's known on the national and every state. I am so excited to, for you guys to know, and probably you guys know him all already, but welcome Faisal. <laughs> What an exciting night. Thank you so much. I want to take a moment, uh, first and foremost, uh, to, to thank the Somali community of Minnesota. There has been days where we could fit in a small room, but I assure you today, the Somalis who support the Republican Party would not even fit the U.S. stadium. And also on this occasion, I want to remind the Somali community the commitment from the Republican Party. As you can see from the chairman of the Republican Party, David Hahn, our governing candidate, Scott Johnson, Matt Burke, and all our statewide candidates. Some of you asked me who is going to be our next attorney general. I would want to welcome also Jim Schultz, who is here with us. So 
So one thing I want to say, and also we have Ryan Wilson, our auditor. <laughs> Let me say, if you had the attention of the Minnesota Republican Party, tonight you have also the attention of the Republican National Committee. The next speaker couldn't have been with us tonight due to some conflict, but our chairwoman, Rana McDonald, the chairwoman of the Republican Party, the entire 50 states is going to address through a video. We're hoping in October, when she comes here, she would meet also the Somali community which tells you the assurance that only not that our attention is within the MNGOB, but also at the national level. So please let us welcome Rana McDonald. Hello, Minnesota Republicans. Congratulations on your Somali Republican leadership dinner. First, I wanna thank some wonderful people and leaders in your state, your state party chairman, David Han, national committee man, Alex Plekish, and national committee woman, Barb Sutter, for their incredible partnership with the RNC. Democrats have let your state down for far too long with rampant crime, inflation, and radical education. But the Republican Party is committed to building relationships with the Somali American community and spreading our message of freedom and opportunity. The road to victory in November runs straight through Minnesota. So let's go knock doors, make calls, and bring friends to the polls. We have the better message. We just need everyone to hear it. Thank you all so much. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. I want to thank uh, Chairman McDaniel. Unfortunately, she could not attend. She wanted to, but I appreciate that she sent a message to us, especially for this meeting. And we are excited about the RNC support of what we're doing in Minnesota and what we're doing to try to create this relationship, this friendship with the Somali people. Uh, Chair McDaniel will be here in Minnesota in the coming weeks to help us as we go through the final few days of our campaign. And uh, to kind of kick that part of our program off, I want to invite up to our podium our candidates for governor and lieutenant governor, Dr. Scott Jensen, uh, NFL Man of the Year, Matt Burke. So come on up and give say a few words. Oftentimes, people who are in power like to divide people because that way they can stay in power. They like to divide people by race or country of origin or religion or Republican, Democrat. I gotta tell you, when I played football, on a football team in the NFL, there's 53 guys, 53 guys, and you have all sorts of guys. You got big guys, small guys, fast guys, slow guys, white guys, black guys, brown guys, Christians, Jews, Muslims, people from America, people from other countries, people that grew up rich, people that grew up poor. And every team I ever played on, do you know how many times I sat through a seminar that had to talk about diversity or equity or how we had to get along? Zero. You know why? Because all of us wanted the same thing and we knew that we needed each other in order to accomplish that goal. What do I want? What do we want? We want to be safe. We want great schools where our kids are educated not indoctrinated, and we want those economic opportunities. We want to work, and we want to work hard. In other words, in other words, we want to be free. That's what we want, that's what you want. We want it for you, you want it for us. 
So I don't know what's happened in the past, but tonight we leave here together and we don't ever look back. Tonight, we stand side by side. And there's a reason we stand side by side. When I talk with Minnesotans across the land and I ask them, what matters to you? The same message emerges. I want to elevate my faith. I want to take care of my family. I want to feel free. I want government to be there, but only to the extent that it has to be. I want to contribute. I want to dream. And I want my kids to be able to dream. We stand side by side because of these words. It's not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly. That's what we do tonight. We together strive valiantly. We know what the issues are. We understand that there is a political machine out there that opposes us. We understand that that machine is large and it's used to having its way. And it has the money. And it has the media in its back pocket. But what they don't have is you. We have you. That's what we have. And that's why we're here tonight. We have you, and we have a movement. And this movement will not be denied, because this is you and I standing side by side. And we will raise our values. We will celebrate our moral compass. And we will let no one deter us, because together we will elevate our faith. We will have freedom. We will take care of our families. And we will win. And when we do, and when we take the fight to Tim Walls, when we stand side by side and when we win, we will know then that we, together, have healed Minnesota. And friends, we're not going to look back. Thank you. I think we just heard from our next governor. I'm going to turn the uh, podium over to uh, Faisal Dury again for a, a message, and then uh, uh, we've got uh, a featured guest tonight that we want to share with you, and he has got a great message for us. So, Faisal. Again, it's me. Thank you, Chairman. And our next governor. Governor. I think I, think I said it with confidence. That's what the people. So next, uh, we have important community members. And we had uh, Holden Duala, who can't join us, but we would have two gentlemen who would join us, Saeed Adam and Ibrahim Adam. Uh, those individuals are important, and as we speak about the journey we had about the Republican Party, we remember the days where Mark Kennedy and Norm Coleman, one was a congressman and one was senator. They've worked hard with the community, dealing with the issues of money wiring, and many other issues, including the Ogden human rights where uh, Ibrahim Adam represents. So I want to give these two gentlemen a few minutes so they can speak on behalf of the community. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Salaamu Alaikum. 
Uh, this is a great honor for me to stand in front of you. Uh, so first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, the Republican Party who have invited us as an organ American community of USA and the Somali community at large. <laughs> On behalf of the organ American community and ONLF, I would like also to thank my dear friend Faisal and Sheikh Tawakal and the rest of the team who put together this excellent event tonight. You guys have done a fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to say a few things here. Uh, it is great to see the Republican Party reestablishing the relationship with the Somali community. This is a long-awaited uh, event. Uh, I just want to let you know, uh, for those of you who might be new, uh, the Ogaden American community has worked with the Republican Party in the past, especially uh, the office of Norm Coleman, the former senator. Uh, we have worked with them and we have established a relationship. And today, uh, we are willing to reestablish that relationship that has been paused for a moment. And in the future, we will be uh, working together and hopefully uh, succeed uh, our uh, political uh, commitment. Uh, we, we're looking for leaders who can fulfill their commitments, their campaign commitments. That is what we're looking for. We're not looking for uh, leaders who, uh, who promise but never fulfill their commitments. So I think from this moment tonight, uh, the Somali community will be sitting down with the, with the, with the politicians uh, and we will make hopefully promises and agreements and by the time you come to the office, we're looking forward uh, to hold you responsible for the commitments that you have promised. So we're not only giving free votes, we will be holding anybody accountable to our values. So. I mean, there are things that are extremely, extremely important for the Somali community here in Minnesota. The security is getting out of hand. Education is another thing. And the list goes on and on and on. So we will get to those long lists and hopefully you can make it. Finally, I want to say thank you again and on behalf of my organization, the Organization American Community and the ONLF, uh, we want to say, we want to wish the Republican Party uh, successful this year. I know this is a crucial moment uh, for the party. Uh, this election is extremely, extremely crucial. So uh, I guess we will sit down after the event and we will work together the list what is important for the community what is important for the Republican Party, and from there, we will reestablish our relationship again. Thank you very much, and looking forward to work with you. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. Wa, wa alaikum assalam. My name is Saeed Adam, a member of the Somali community here, also from the state of Ohio. Um, I'm going to actually, not to say a lot because of the time, I've got a few minutes, but I want to basically narrate a very important story that has something to do with this event. I am an independent, previously voted for Democratic Party. Before that, I was a Republican. I worked for John Kasich of Ohio, one of the greatest governors in our state, a Republican. And I'm also a very an activist. Normally, I endorse candidates based on their platform. About two weeks ago, I have met with Imam Tawakal. And I asked him, I recently saw him posting pictures with 
Scott Johnson and other people, other famous Republicans in the state, with the mindset of Democratic Party, I said, uncle, what's up with you? What happened? You became Republican? You know, he said, no. I said, why? Why are you basically um, with the pictures and why are you posting these videos and, and whatnot? You know, he sat quiet. He said, no, come out here. He sat down with me. He explained to me. And before that, we were talking about the problem is that facing Somali community, a large Minnesotans, lack of security, people being anti-police, no accountability. The problem of having one party or having allegiance to one party. And he said, I want to change that. Republican Party is part of the community. They are our neighbors. They are co-workers. They are part of our educators, our parents. And they're also office holders. And we have to hold them accountable. We cannot alienate them. And he told me, I want to basically to have a two choices, multiple choices. So if one is bad, I have another one who can I count to. And that resonated with me. And he actually said the famous statement by Barack Obama, there is no red state, there isn't a blue state, there is the United States of America. <laughs> and he said, Minnesota is not an entity owned by the Democratic Party. Yes. He said basically, there is no red state, red Minnesotans or blue Minnesotans. He said there is a united Minnesotans. And we vote based on our interest, where we see accountability, where people, politicians keep their, uh, their promises. So that resonated with me. But after that, you know, we had another dinner, me, him and another group, where we're talking about forming a pack, similar to APAC, a pack that basically holds people accountable, every party is welcomed, Republican, Independent, Democratic. That is particularly service for the Somali community interest. Without further ado, I want Everybody in this room, whether you're Republican, Democratic, the doors are open for you. Make sure what you're promising tonight is followed by action. We will hold you accountable. And I encourage everyone to vote by their interest, not by a party allegiance. Every Somali community should have, should understand and educate themselves who they voting for. Not by color, not by religion, not by gender. Vote by your interest. Uh, Scott Johnson, I hope you have a, uh, hopefully Chinese. I do appreciate uh, uh, Imam Tawakal. You have a strong, strong person from the community, an Imam who has been working for this community for the past 20 years. There is a people that has been in that job. Faisal, I appreciate to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Um, Han, you're next. I just came to join him, by the way. Thank you. Uh, we now have a special guest uh, who's going to join us tonight. Uh, they call him the rooftop preacher. Pastor Corey Brooks, founder and senior pastor of the New Beginnings Church in Chicago, founder and CEO of Project HOOD Communities Development Corporation, has become a leading voice and presence in the fight against the violence gripping Chicago's poorest neighborhoods. Pastor Brooks' efforts received national acclaim when he spent 94 days living on the roof of a rundown motel located across the street from the church. It had become a center for drugs, prostitution, and violence. And within three months, he raised enough money to buy the building and tear it down. 
And the land, the land is now earmarked to be the location of a $35 million state-of-the-art community center. The goal of the proposed community center is to offset violence, provide the support necessary to make the neighborhood a safer place, and give children the tools to reach a brighter future. I had the uh, honor of listening to Pastor Brooks along with some of my colleagues in Chicago a few months ago, and it's just an inspiring story. So, Pastor Brooks, please come. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. Uh, thank you to the chairman for introducing me. Thank you to uh, the Minnesota uh, Republican Party uh, for giving me an opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, to all of those who are running for office here in this great state, uh, I applaud you and support you. Uh, Dr. Scott Jensen, Let's give him a great big support tonight. His running mate, Matt Berg, let's give him a great big support tonight. And all of the others who are running uh, for office, we salute you and we thank you uh, for this opportunity. I am tremendously grateful tonight uh, to be here and I hope and pray uh, that I can say something that would encourage you on tonight. It was November the 20th when a funeral was held a few days before. The funeral of a young man named Carlton Archer who was shot and killed at our church, shot and killed. His parents did not want to have the funeral at the church because they were afraid of what would happen. Carlton was a member, his parents were members of our church, and I never will forget his mother came to me and his father, they were distraught, they were heartbroken because Carlton, who was a good student, but also who had gotten mixed up in gang activity, was shot and killed in the back of their home, and they came to me distraught and broken like any parent would be of a child who had gotten shot, and I never will forget how she said to me, Pastor, we can't have the funeral here at this church because we are afraid of what might happen to the kids that are coming into the neighborhood. We're afraid that the kids that Carlton grew up with, that something will happen to them as they come into the neighborhood. Mind you, she was only talking about four blocks away. And I assured her, listen, nothing is going to happen. And I know that because I've been pastoring in this neighborhood and this summer alone, I told her I've done over 25 funerals of young black men who have been shot and killed, most of them not even being reported, and most of them, their murders unsolved. I said, nothing is going to happen. You can have the funeral here. I assure you that everything is going to be okay. Well, sure enough, on that day when the kids were walking into the neighborhood, all of a sudden we heard gunfire, semi-automatic gunfire. My heart sank. I instantly ran downstairs to make sure that no one had gotten shot, and thankfully no one had gotten shot, but as you can imagine, chaos was everywhere. The police finally came and we were finally able to get things calmed down and we debated on not whether we should have the funeral or whether we should go on. But we decided to go on with the funeral. And at the end of that funeral, something happened that had never happened before. I challenged young black men who had brought guns into the church illegally to turn those guns in. I challenged them to make sure that they did not leave with those illegal guns. I prayed, and when I said amen, quiet was over the whole audience. All of a sudden, a young man stands up and he turns in a gun. Another one stands up and turns in a gun. Another one stands up and turns in a gun. And right then, I realized I had been in this neighborhood and I had not been doing enough to fight the evils that were progressing every single day. 
And I made a vow to God, whatever you want me to do from this point on, to fight the evil in our neighborhood. Whatever you want me to do from this point on to take on the battle of keeping our family values together, I'm all in. Little did I know that God would challenge me on that day. And as I walked out of the funeral, across the street from our church was an old motel. That motel had been a, a center of a lot of criminal activity. Young women were being prostituted and sold. Sex trafficking was the order of the day. Drugs were being peddled. Guns were illegally being sold. The gangs had a hold of this place. And I felt the prompting of God telling me to go up on the roof of that motel and stay there. And don't come down until I raise enough money to tear it down. And that's exactly what I did in the winter of Chicago on November 20th, 2011. I went up on the roof of that motel and I refused to come down. And let me just say this. There are some challenges in life that you must take a stand. There are some challenges in life that come that you must decide that you want to turn things around. And I stayed on that roof not for three days, not for 21 days, but for 94 days. <laughs> Until we raise the funds to tear it down and then start the journey of trying to build a center. Here we are 10 years later still trying to build this center, a center that cost $35 million. And how much did we have? Zero dollars. And we said, what are we going to do? I said, I know it will do, it worked the first time, let's try it again. So on November the 20th of 2021, 10 years later, we put eight train containers together and I built a roof on top of it. I put three tents, and since November the 20th of 2021, I've been staying on that roof, bringing attention and awareness to the violence and the poverty in Chicago, letting everyone in the world know how backwards the left has taken us down the road in Chicago. Over those 10 months, I've raised $20 million. And I believe Allah for the next $15 million so we can build debt free. But since I've been on that roof, I've had all kinds of visitors. People have come from far and wide. Fox TV has given me my own platform called Rooftop Revelation. I've talked to elected officials. I've talked to people from a corporate America, Fortune 500 companies who have come to stay all night. But this past week, I was so inspired. And the reason why I was inspired is because it was almost as if I was looking at myself in a mirror, at a person who is trying to challenge his brothers and sisters to look at things differently. I was recently visited by the Imam Tawakal of the Somalian community here in Minneapolis. I was so inspired when I heard him talk about the things that you are going through. I must admit that my first thought was, what does the Somalian community 
have to do with me on the south side of Chicago. That was a very narrow way of thinking. But that was just my first thought. As I spoke with the Imam about the struggles facing his community, I realized that we shared so much in common. Both of our communities are being held hostage by woke city governments. More interested in promising woke reforms instead of actual reforms that work. After George Floyd was murdered, many folks in this community, just like across America, thought that the promised reforms would make things better. So they made these promises on national news. They made them in your local newspaper that these reforms, because of the George Floyd murder, are going to make things better for all of us. Since then, I know you have found out the hard way, <laughs> like we have in Chicago. As we said on the South Side, you've been played. You've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. You've been ran amok. Since they promised us those reforms, violence has gone up. I don't know about you, but in Chicago, violence is everywhere. Where violence used to be just in these pockets, it is now all over the city. The magnificent mile has now become murder mile. Why? Because all over the city of Chicago, violence has gone up. I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like I've been played. Education has gone down. In my neighborhood, can you believe this? We have a school where they have a 4% reading proficiency and a 6% math proficiency. They promised us reforms, but what we are seeing is the direct opposite. Businesses have suffered. Because of the riots, there are pharmacies in our neighborhood that still have yet to open. Family values have simply been dismissed. I don't know how you feel about it, but my family values mean the world to me. <laughs> While our problems on the South Side have been going on for far too long, since the 60s, we realize that there is strength to be held in connecting with struggling communities in other cities. Perhaps this will force leaders who feel they can ignore us. Perhaps us coming together will force them now to pay attention. <laughs> After all, the majority of politicians care more about numbers than they do the care of people. So if we can increase our numbers, maybe we can awaken them to the fact that their continuing ignoring of our collective plight has an enormous cost that they're going to pay. Politically, economically, and human rights. As I talked with the Imam, it became clear that we both want the same thing for our people. The same thing that he wants for every single one of you is the same thing that I want for the people on the south side of Chicago. What is that? I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> it is the revitalization, it is the awakening of the American dream. We rarely hear about the American dream anymore. So the question is, where did it go? I can tell you, it went nowhere. It's always there. We just stop believing and aspiring in it. That's why I'm here today. I want the Somalian community to never stop 
trying to achieve the American dream. You came across dangerous situations because you will believe in the American dream. You have fought divisions and you've gone through all kinds of heartaches and struggles because you believe in the American dream. And it's that American dream that I want you to never give up on. Unlike some who have chosen to make wokeism their new pagan god. They have chosen to make race and politics their arbitrator of what is good and bad in our society. Shame on us. Shame on us for lifting such lowly value systems so high in our society that it replaced the American dream. The fact that wokeism declared the American dream to be a vestige of white supremacy is all that you need to know. We need to have a revival and awakening of the American dream from my community to the Somalian community, right here in Minneapolis and in every similar struggling community, whether they be white, brown, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, and so forth. All of us need to buy into the American dream. Both the Imam and I know that our people are hungry. I know my people are hungry for far more, for more meaning in life, for a purpose-driven life. As a people, you must be hungry. Immigrants who escaped a failing nation in hopes of pursuing a better life here, whether you are from the south of Somalia or the north of Somalia, you came here because you wanted the American dream. You wanted to pursue a better life. You wanted the freedoms that were being snatched from you. And the woke politicians that you know so well in Minneapolis and around Minnesota want to take away the latter steps and eliminate the process that immigrants and people from my community need in order to advance in life. They want to take away the police and leave us with these communities that are unsafe. They want to take away the educational system and leave us with a dummy down educational system where your children and my children are not even able to read and write. How will they ever pursue the American dream not being able to read and write? But that's what they want. They want to change your family values. Where the women are no longer women and the men are no longer men. And I wanna to say to the Somalian people, don't be like my community who has gotten so afraid and so weakened to stand up and speak about what is right and what is wrong. If you're going to pursue the American dream, you must take a stand. So we must receive, we must revive, we must awaken the American dream in all of her glory. See, the most beautiful thing about the American dream, that it is that. It is nothing more than a promise, a possibility, an opportunity. It is up to every single one of us to make what we want out of the American dream. That is why it is so crucial that communities like mine 
and the Somalian community have the tools to raise our children so that they can be the best that they can possibly be to pursue the American dream, which is afforded to all of us. So they can move into a better life. That's why you came here. So your children can have a better life. That's what I want for my children and my grandchildren to have a better life. We need to give them something. Give them something to aspire to. And we know that once they start moving forward in life, they will create possibilities and opportunities that will last for generations to come. The American dream is the key to a better future for us all. And that is why we must revive, awaken the dream in all of our struggles, in all of our struggling communities across this great land where every Somalian lives, whether it's Minnesota, New York, Philadelphia, wherever they are, you must encourage them to live the dream. To my Somalian brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you, even those who are watching and streaming with us, wherever you are in America, I want to encourage you to see the opportunities. Tonight, those of you who are here under the sound of my voice, I want to encourage you to see the opportunities that lie before you. The opportunities that lie before you even with the Republican Party. Please, please, please don't do like my community where we often get overlooked because of our blind allegiance to a party that does not reflect our traditional, cultural, and family values. And as a result of our blind allegiance, I don't want you to fall into the same ditch where your communities are unsafe, where your schools are in a shamble, where your family structure is broken and turned upside down. I don't want you to be in a position like our community where they have lost hope and lost the thought that having the American dream is a possibility. So I say to you, take advantage of the opportunity that lies before you. Tonight, every Somalian everywhere, listen, hearken to my voice. Walk through the door that the Republican Party is ushering you into. And I know, I've been there, where you had that feeling where, ah, I just don't know the Republican Party. Ugh. <laughs> but tonight, I want to tell you, walk through the door. Walk through the door of restoration of your values that you hold so dearly. Walk through the door where safe communities and stronger police departments are the order of the day. Walk through the door where you have greater economic opportunity, where you're not being taxed for everything and restricted and you can't even get your businesses started. Walk through the door to the protection of your religious freedoms. Walk through the door when you'll be judged not by the color of your skin, not by your religion, but by the content of your character. Walk through the door where every Somalian child has a right to live of the American dream walk through the door of the American dream and to my friend I pray that he always prosper that he always be protected and that he always be blessed 
May Allah bless you and Allah bless America. Thank you, Pastor Brooks. We're glad that you're able to join us here. We are grateful for the work that you're doing. And we look forward to your next visit to Minnesota, which I believe will be soon. We've uh, had an opportunity to hear from our candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, and I want to bring up our other three statewide candidates who are here. Jim Schultz, our candidate for attorney general. Kim Crockett, our candidate for secretary of state. And Ryan Wilson, our state auditor candidate. If you would come up and uh, greet our friends and say a few words. Thank you, David. This is great. Thank you. Who here is ready to retire Keith Elson from politics? <laughs> I am Jim Schultz, and I know what you're all thinking. Boy, he is taller, stronger, and certainly better looking than Matt Burke. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, you heard everybody agree there. Sorry. I'm Jim Schultz, and I'm running in this race because every color, every creed, every walk of life deserves safe streets. Every Minnesotan deserves an attorney general that will restore public safety to our streets. That an attorney general that doesn't get, get behind these reckless policies like defunding the police. These reckless policies that fail to hold criminals accountable for their actions. These reckless policies that have left men and women, girls and boys dead on our streets. That's an outrage and a disgrace. And my solemn promise to you is that when I am the attorney general, I will fight for you. I will fight for you every day of the week as Americans, as Minnesotans, and as children of God. That's what we have to do. That's what you deserve. That's what you're entitled to, and I will fight for you. And in these coming weeks, I need you to fight for me. I need you to tell your friends. I need you to tell your family to come out and vote because we have to win this election. Failure is not an option. Minnesotans deserve it. You deserve it. We have to win this election. And so I ask you to join with us, pray for us, join with us so we can restore public safety to our streets, and let's get it done. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless Minnesota. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. It's pretty exciting this evening, isn't it? I'm Kim Crockett. I'm your endorsed candidate for Secretary of State. Thank you. So, the Secretary of State's office, I have found people don't know, oversees elections and business services, and both of these are absolutely critical to your freedom and well-being as citizens. The Secretary of State is a constitutional officer, along with the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, and State Auditor. They all sit on something called the Executive Council, which has an enormous amount of power. During COVID, the current constitutional officers, led by Governor Walls, voted over and over again to lock you down. They closed our houses of worship, our schools, and many government and medical services, not to mention your small businesses. You could shop at big box stores, but not the thousands of small businesses that make up your neighborhoods. Many of those small businesses closed, never to open again. Our loved ones were isolated when they were ill and dying, and children fell behind in school. Other states did not take such a drastic approach to managing COVID, and those states came through the crisis just fine, better than we did. Now, voting is your most important civic right as a citizen. Our current Secretary of State, Steve Simon, who oversees elections, has served for almost eight years, and the Democrats have held the office for 16 long years. I think they've grown indifferent to you and arrogant. 
You should have rock solid confidence that your vote counts. It should never be canceled by fraud or carelessness. Sadly, Minnesota has some of the worst election laws in the country. For example, while most of the world requires some kind of ID to vote, Minnesota does not. And the free world has concluded that absentee voting is rife with fraud and has rejected it. And yet here in Minnesota, our Secretary of State pushes us to vote more and more by mail and absentee. I promise you, as your next Secretary of State, that I will never shut you down, and I will protect your vote. I will make sure that your vote counts. So, we're together here tonight because Minnesota is our home. The most important thing you can do to protect your home and your rights as American citizens is to use your vote to choose leaders who will lead us out of this chaos, the chaos of crime in our streets, chaos in our schools, and the closure of your businesses. Please use your vote this fall to walk through the door by voting Republican. Thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. My name is Ryan Wilson, and I'm running for state auditor. <laughs> And hopefully one of the lessons we've seen in this last week is we definitely need a new state auditor. <laughs> one of the pleasures of running for office is being able to travel the state. I talk to communities all over the place, both geographically diverse and diverse in their beliefs. But the one thing that all Minnesotans that I meet with have in common is they want to know that they can be safe when they walk down the streets and they want to have strong schools so they can raise their families. It's what I want for my family. I'm a father of five. We're raising our kids. I had a small business. I started that and I grew it into a very successful company. And that's what everybody wants. It's the common message I hear around Minnesota. And so when I'm state auditor, I'm going to make that a priority. We're going to help people understand where are your law enforcement budgets going? Is it being spent on wasted items or is it going to help the police and the law enforcement keep us safe? I'm going to focus on our schools and I'm going to make sure the money is making it to classrooms so that the teachers can teach and the kids can learn and not wasted on bureaucracies and waste. <laughs> For over a decade, we've had a single party ruling this state. And what has it got us? It's gotten us waste, it's gotten us fraud, it's gotten us abuse, it's gotten us mismanagement. But you've heard tonight from everybody, it's gotten us division, right? It's turned doctors against patients, it's turned uh, teachers against parents, it's turned communities against each other. And what I'm gonna do when I'm state auditor is we're going to shine a light on how government's working. We're going to bring back accountability. We're going to bring back transparency. We're going to restore trust between the people and their government, between communities, between each other. And so that's my promise to you as State Auditor. I will fight to stop fraud. I will fight to stop abuse. I will fight to stop waste because we all work too hard in Minnesota to have our tax dollars stolen. So thank you for having me here tonight. I'm Ryan Wilson and I'm running for State Auditor. <laughs> Thank you to all our candidates, um, and I hope that you will consider giving them your support on November 8th and before that, uh, as much help as you can supply. I'd also like to recognize, I know we have other candidates who are running for office in the audience. I saw Warren Limmer, Kristen Robbins, uh, Danny Nadeau, uh, May Long. Could you please stand if you are running for office so that we can recognize your hard work? Thank you. I am going to uh, invite uh, Faisal to come back up. I guess we have a, just a few concluding uh, remarks to make, but I want to thank all of you for taking your time to be with us this evening and all of you uh, watching this on streaming and Pastor Brooks for your inspiring message. We all need to walk through that door and we want to thank you for that. Faisal.
and I'll say in few words, I'll, I promise we'll wrap up in five minutes or 10 minutes by most. So, Wahan Raba in an Afar Ereira Hado and Wahan Raba in an Somali community, Umhad Ali, Adi Ad Bauma Senti, and see Wayne Bad Ushar of Ten, his big Jumuriga, and not going to add Bani Dingam had Elena, see the Hugh Galado Soke Gishan Hour. إن وحن رواقف كستو هل كان يقدر دعونا يعاوه إن الحسوسيو وحكيناي إن أنو حرير دب الله سما إن حزب الجمهورية وحياه أنا أقول كل في وحكم إذا إن نبت قلية ذا مجال ذو آذو سيحماتي معيشة ذو آذو كعذي إسكولا هذا الله باتن سنو عروتي إنه أيدي جنا ين وأنو وحن نتيجة كصوص عن ميان كوسي جرنا Mian kuteri kerana inogo dulu dah Allah kasih orang wah orang kan ni me in hal kan an habadu sah dana no. Mian kuteri kerana maishad mel lawatan dolar ad gas kushuban cerita inad mant lihat dan kushuban tu. Hatta bawa pun hasusin aja. Somali dah kar hisbi ke demokrasi ke tager sen. Eh amin sen in jamhuri ku usah dega mela ay Somali tu degan tay. Wahan hasusin aja Somali tu inay uba han tay jamhuri ke jamhuri kono u Somali tu uba hanya. Ad bana do mahad sentihin. Just to summarize, one of the critical things that I want to conclude tonight, people always ask me, why have you joined the Republican Party? We cannot continue to send our kids and have our kids go to failing schools. We want our kids to have choice when it comes to schools. We came from where there are bullets and war, and we cannot live in Minneapolis where you hear the sound of bullets. We want our people to hear the sound of construction and development. We want an economic opportunity, and we want an equal economic opportunity. We cannot take the Democratic Party to define the narrative of the political process and our political discourse. And we cannot be in an area where there are no opportunities and false promises and where the party sends armies of volunteers in every election and throughout the next election you don't hear anything from them. We want an engagement similar to the engagement that Scott Jensen is doing. Let us make sure that we all know Scott Jensen is going to be our next governor. And we want to thank him. I'm confident when we have Scott Jensen as our governor, the dynamics and the relationship we have with government is going to change. And now, I want to invite our chairman, David Han, Abdaziz Hirsi, who was one of our founders of the Somali Republican Party, to come to the podium. And also our East Grand Forks. Some of you may not know East Grand Forks. It's one of the farthest borders of Canada. So we have an imam from East Grand Forks. I want to also welcome him to the podium. So, I want to welcome Hersey to say a word. Assalamu alaikum. First and foremost, I'm very delighted to be here tonight. It's a night that we've been waiting so long. Somali communities is very active community. I'm a very delighted Republican Party, who is the party that I choose. They won. Now we're establishing the best relationship that we've all been working for so hard. This is something I'm very sure the community will benefit, the Republican Party will benefit, the United States of America will benefit. Because we're in a turning point of history, this nation has found a group of people who, who had a difficult place, 
I mean, difficult life to live where they're living. They found for freedom. I mean, family value, hard work, ethics. All of them are under attack at this time. Somali community, we are very strong community. We like our family, we like our faith. Everything is fading out. So now the relationship tonight is the beginning of something I probably will call turn around the ship. United States will come back in the strongest state. Minnesota is a home and will come back. So I would love to welcome and our German, David Hannon, that I know him a very long time. And, he, and, and it's very delightful that he is a German of the party tonight because he's been working this event and this relationship so many years. So I would love to welcome him to Boria. Thank you, thank you all for being here. Uh, this has been a great event. We appreciate uh, uh, the work that was put into place to make this happen. Uh, Faisal and uh, the Imam Tawakal, thank you. Uh, and uh, we uh, express our gratitude for all the people in this community uh, for uh, reaching out and uh, allowing us to stand with you. And I commit to you as leader of the Republican Party that our candidates and our party is going to continue this effort in the coming years. So thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I want uh, a minute for our Imam from East Grand Forks. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Say alaikum wa salam. My name is Imam Abdul Saq Duale. I'm the Imam of Al Huda Islamic Center, East Grand Forks, Powell County, Northwest Minnesota. Uh, also, I am the member of uh, the IANA Islamic Association of North America. It's the big umbrella, 40 centuries. We have 20, 20 centuries, 20 Islamic centuries in the state of Minnesota, and also other 20 is out of the state, like other states, Washington or Boston or uh, Columbus. I have message uh, tonight because uh, my imam is, uh, or my friend is, they are not here tonight. It's only me here, but uh, earlier uh, today we have conversation, and they wanted to invite uh, the uh, the 20 centuries in Minnesota leaders or the imams. They wanted to invite uh, the Republican leaders to discuss more and what the opportunity the community they have. They, we know our community they looking uh, choices to get the choices either the. Because we are the community leaders, we advocate our community, and we look the what the opportunity the leaders they have. You know, I know I met the two weeks ago uh, the Dr. Scott Chanson. He came the all the way East Grand Focus, and we have conversation. And just the, me and Faisal and Tawakal and other Somali leaders, we are working to to uh, to make the two guys to meet the. Uh, the community leaders, the Islamic leaders, and they're ready for that, to discuss more. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Imam, uh, Imam uh, Abdirsak. Uh, I think uh, before we uh, give a gift uh, to the Somali community from the chairman, I want to invite Qasim Mohammed and uh, Sam Sisman. Uh, Qasim, welcome. Hello, my Republican colleagues and my fellow Somali communities. Tonight, this event is a journey which takes many times, many years. And it has been the effort and the combination of community members whose resolve is to reach the goal you have tonight. Those men and women who did that resolve are here tonight. 
and I'm glad they invited us this important event. Few years ago, we were only few fragments of community members and those who dare to express themselves as Republicans were facing community pressure and political alienation. But I'm glad to see tonight this beautiful event. And I am sure, I am sure we will make better and will improve well. However, the preservation of those community members, the women and men, which brought us here, will benefit the fourth of November, this November. And we wanted to elect Republican officials, both state level and federal level, who are strong enough to restore our family values, fight for our education and quality of education for our children, fight against the crime against the, against the crime on our streets, and stop drug, drug trafficking. That's what we want, and that's the goal we have. Of course, of course we will not, we will not stop the churn, and I hope we will have to win, and we will succeed our election to our end. And thank you very much. Hello everyone. First and foremost, I would like to thank you all for being here and participating in our first ever Somali Republican dinner. Wow, what a turnout. This is just incredibly humbling to know that I come from one of the best communities that make up our beautiful state of Minnesota. Thank you. My name is Simpson Esman, my friends call me Sammy, and I represent the Republican Party of Minnesota and serve as the ambassador for Congressional District 3 Republicans. I'm the founder of Esman Communications and PR, a Twin Cities-based public relations firm that helps build brands for a wide variety of industries. I'm also an addiction counselor during the day and work with those who are struggling with addiction. As a young woman, As a young woman born in the United States to Somali immigrants here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, I understand two diverse cultures and believe in and appreciate the freedoms and opportunities we have in America. I never thought I would live to witness the day my amazing community come together with the Minnesota GOP. To show that after years of Democrat failures, Minnesotans of all backgrounds, including you, who joined us this evening are tired of our current government and those who are representing us in Minnesota at the Capitol. I'm sure just like any other community, we all want safer streets along with getting inflation under control, better education and school choice for our children of the future. It's no secret that we have been misrepresented by politicians for years and that will change coming November, when we elect amazing leaders who support our traditional values, faith, and freedom. As a community, we need to get behind these amazing leaders who are fighting for a better Minnesota, whether it's making a donation, phone baking, door knocking, or hosting a fundraiser or meet and greet. I want you to remember, they need us to help them win this election season and can't do it without our support. Thank you, and I would like to... Thank you, and I would like to introduce, uh, bring David Hahn up to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. On uh, behalf of the Republican Party of Minnesota, 
We wanted to give a small token of our appreciation for our friendship and my personal gratitude for the friendship of the Imam and his uh, uh, faithfulness in working with us. And so, watch it later. Thank you for your leadership. And that concludes our program here this evening. I appreciate uh, everyone being here and everybody who is watching, and we look forward to a, a great future together. And thank you for all our candidates for being here too. God bless and good night. Thank you. <laughs> أدبنا وما زنتين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you. Thank you. There are some sets of keys in the lobby. If you forgot it or lost it, it's there. And thank you all for coming. It's pretty early. If you still need to go out and have fun, enjoy yourselves. And thank you all for coming. <laughs> Turn this off. Yeah, I want to turn it off.